Hi, this is Saber Spark, and you are watching Fan Favorites. What's going on, Nation? This is the Concert Cruiser, and I'm back at Everfree Northwest, and I finally get a chance to do another episode of Fan Favorites. And today we're going to be talking to the man of cartoons, Saber Spark. Saber, thank you so much for being a part of this. Now, the first thing I like to ask anybody in Fan Favorites is, how did you get your start in a, in this particular fandom? In this case, uh, cartoons in general. Cartoons. I mean, I've always loved cartoons. I grew up with Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. I always thought, like, wow, I love animation and I don't think I'll ever like sports or news. I just wanna watch cartoons. Eh, I'll enjoy it while I still can because when you become an adult, you can't watch cartoons anymore. Wap wap, that wasn't true. I started growing up more with like cartoons through the early 2000s, watching Disney stuff. I just always loved animation. I'm not good at drawing it, but I've always been a fan of it. But hey, if I can't draw, I can talk about, I'll talk about it. And then YouTube popped around with like My Little Pony in like 2011. And I'm like, hey, I'll talk about pony stuff. Why not? My Little Pony. And that worked, worked out for me. Did it for four more years. Around 2015, I started talking about just cartoons in general. That took off, and I've been running with the momentum ever since. Yeah, speaking of cartoons, because uh, you, you mentioned cartoons in the 90s here, and I uh, assume all throughout the early 2000s. Have you been noticing much of a difference with style? Because uh, I know Danny Antonucci from Ed, Ed and Eddie, he used to have this saying, uh, F digital and draw. And we seem to be going more and more into a digital era. Do you think there's a chance that hand drawn could come back? Yeah, I mean, like, it's all still hand drawn technically. If he means on paper, no, and it's not coming back because that, I mean, maybe in like niche ways, but like, it's just not as economically viable. So it's still hand drawn just on computer monitors. So it's not to say like it's not a good art form, it's just not really efficient, especially with how things are changing. Now, as far as like falling more into like the realm of like, doing puppet animation you know it's not to say that one form of animation is inherently like low quality garbage it's just that like it depends on whose hands it's in so i've seen good tomb boom i've seen bad tomb boom i've seen good you know hand-drawn animation on pencil and paper i've seen bad so it all depends on who's controlling it. yeah i agree and i know you've also been you've mentioned that you're a big fan of the anthropomorphic design and one you have been talking about a lot quite recently was Beastars. Yes. So how would you say those anthro characters are different from the anthro characters we've seen in the past? This one's a bit more mindful of like human culture where it's like Robin Hood is just like, I'm a, I'm a fox and then Will John's a bear, Prince John's a lion. It's like, an, I mean, those are anthro just as anthro as Beastars. Though I feel like Beastars feels like it's like a human shaped body with an animal head and an animal like tail and claws. Robin Hood, it almost feels like a fox on its hind legs or something, or a bear with its body shape. Like, compare a bear from, like, Little John and Robin Hood, looks more like a bear, than Riz from Beastars, who looks like a giant human body with bear claws, bear head, and, and a bear butt. <laughs> so, um, there's some visual differences, but also Beastars doesn't shy away with talking about, like, because I've mentioned this before, where in Beastars, it's like we're talking about racism, sexism, all the different isms, but it's it's being done to the conduit of predators versus prey, herbivores versus carnivores, using that as a bit of a way to represent how humans also go head to head with that, where it's like, oh, well, you're violent and I can't be with you, or you're a woman, you're soft and quiet, and, it, it, and, I'm, and I'm definitely putting this very much so to contain short form. Yeah. But Beastars serves as a way for to discuss human nature through animals, funny enough. Now, I've seen your uh, your channel, and you have also have not shied away from more mature and adult-rated cartoons. How do you try to get that past the YouTube censors? Innuendos and censorship, as in, like, <laughs> blur it up, gosh and blur, black bars, and lots of creative innuendos. <laughs> now, you've also talked about uh, cartoons that have only lasted for, like, maybe one or two seasons. Is there one show that you think deserved a better shot or deserved more attention? So I haven't finished it yet, but Symbiotic Titan okay. is another one. That that show could have gone places, but they pulled it. Um, Tuka and Birdie, I'm glad that it got, I mean, because that one got picked up by Adult Swim. It started on Netflix, and then they pulled it, and Adult Swim's like, we'll take care of it. And I think it got greenlit for a third season, so at least it's kind of found a home. But it sounds like Symbiotic Titan's the place where it's like, oh man, like that first season was amazing. And then Cartoon Network pulled it. Apparently, so the story goes, they wrote it off on their taxes and the government owns it now it's i i need to confirm this but this apparently some messy past with that where it's stuck in like limbo now 
All right, one last question here. Is there any type of cartoon or a particular cartoon that you really just do not want to talk about? Hmm. It's tough. So I, I, I'm a sucker for pain. So I, I don't really shy away from things. I don't, not too often. I mean, there was that fart episode of Total, of Total Drama, oh, Rama. That was, that was uncomfortable. And then there's the poop episode of uh, Peepadoo that was really hard to watch. But you know what? I, I feel like, oh, there's something called um, Where the Dead Go to Die. And I've been told to watch that. And apparently it's like super edgy, super vulgar and graphic. There are things on there where it's like, they do things to children. And I'm like, that's, that's where we cross the line. I'm good. So, cause like there's, I mean like, I'm not afraid of being challenged from like really graphic storytelling if it's got a point to prove, but, or something to say, but there are other moments where it's like, why are you saying what you're saying? Oh, just to be shocking? Eh, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. All right, Sam, thank you so much for this interview. It was great to get a chance to see you and meet you again. And until next time, I'll see you guys at the con.